In this video, we will show you how to replace your center bearing on this Chevy Silverado. This will be located under your vehicle. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to mention is due to the fact we're raising and supporting the rear of the vehicle, you need to make sure you at least chalk the front wheels assuming you still have those on the ground. That'll help prevent the vehicle from rolling away on you while you continue. Safely make your way under the vehicle. We're looking along the center here for our carrier bearing. The carrier bearing itself is going to be held to the frame with two mounting bolts and mounting nuts. We'll be using a 14 millimeter on this application. We're going to loosen, remove the hardware and start it back on just a couple threads. <laughs> Quick inspection here, make sure everything is reusable. If not, just go ahead and replace it as you continue. Before we continue towards the rear of the vehicle, let's continue with a small crayon or marking device and we want to make sure we mark each portion of the drive shaft, the front portion in comparison to the rear. Let's use my crayon, make a nice marking here, nice approximate marking there. Let's make our way towards that rear differential. As we make our way back here, we'll be paying attention to the differential yoke in comparison to the U-joint which is attached to the drive shaft. When we go to put everything back together, we want to make sure we have it in the same exact positioning here. This is for balancing. We'll make sure that we mark along this cap here and then also along the yoke. We have a clear marking at this point. Let's apply a little bit of support under this area and continue on to removing our four mounting bolts that hold this in place. We'll be using an 11 millimeter. As you remove the bolts and the caps, make sure you give them a close inspection. If it looks like anything's rotted or damaged, go ahead and replace it. <laughs> Keep in mind, as you remove the final side over there, there's nothing else holding this end of the drive shaft into the differential here. It could potentially fall out. That's what the support is for. As you try to separate the drive shaft from the yoke, you want to be careful not to pop the caps off of the U-joint. Typically when you do pry it out of position, one side will come out, the other side's going to be stuck and the cap may pop off and that can cause damage. Hold on to each side of the cap as you continue and have some tape handy. Now that I have this apart, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about on the inside of the U-joint here. It's not a good idea to pull this cap off, but I do want you to see what's on the inside there. Looking on the inside of the cap, you can see there's a whole bunch of small roller bearings. It's common for those to come out of place and that's going to cause a U-joint issue. I'll just give this a quick inspection, slide it back on there and I'm going to use some tape to hold everything in place. That looks good still. We don't need much, we're going to be taking it back off in the long run. With the rear of the drive shaft supported, we'll be focusing along the center and along the forward portion. As far as the center, we're going to have to hold this up and remove the hardware. But before we start doing that, let's pay attention up at the front. In the front of the drive shaft is where it slides into the transmission tail shaft. It's possible for fluid to come out of this area while you pull out the drive shaft, so make sure you have a collection bucket underneath this area so you can recycle that fluid properly. I'm going to apply upward pressure on the drive shaft here and start removing the mounting hardware. Keep in mind that the drive shaft is extremely heavy and awkward to hold. There we are. As we start pulling this down, we're going to start pulling the front out of the transmission. Let's get this over to the bench. On the bench we have the forward portion of the shaft held in place. I can see my two markings and they're perfectly aligned, at least close enough. Let's take hold of the rearward portion of the shaft and we'll start pulling this straight off of there. What you'll find is that you do have a sealed area on the rear shaft here. It's going to have a smooth area on the forward shaft and then there's a splined area. It's going to get a little bit tight essentially is what I'm trying to say. Let's keep pulling. Right here is where it's getting tight. 
Perfect. We'll give the rear portion of the shaft a quick inspection to make sure that the seal is still in good working order. It's a good idea to go ahead and replace this. If you are replacing it, just go ahead and tap it right off of there, clean up the shaft, give it a close inspection, and install the new seal. With that area separated, we can start removing the carrier bearing from the forward shaft. To do this, we're going to have to drive this straight rearward toward the splined area here. Be careful not to cause any damage to the drive shaft. To remove this, we'll be causing some vibration and attempting to drive it straight off of here. You can also use a puller of some sort if you have one handy. I'm just going to use my air hammer here with a long chisel bit. If you find you have a hard time removing it off of there, you can use a cutting wheel. We'll cut off the base area here, then remove the rubber portion and continue on with the bearing. With this cut, we can split the outer portion, set that aside for recycling. We can see the rubber bushing in here. As you can tell, it's in very poor condition. Now we can finish removing the rubber bushing from here. You can either cut it off or just continue with your hammer and chisel. We've got our rubber bushing out of the way. Now we can continue removing the bearing. Now I'm gonna spin it around a little bit, make a slit on the other side as well. Let's give it a little bonk and remove it. Let's clean this area so we can have a closer look. Keep cutting a little further here. Now that we have the slit in this area, we're going to continue on, trying to drive these two portions apart enough so we can drive the race off of the drive shaft. Now with the bearing and race off of the drive shaft, it's time to clean and inspect the drive shaft. Make sure it's not damaged or rotted in any way. I'll just use some sandpaper and give it a light scuffing to make sure that it's a smooth surface. Once you have this cleaned down, we'll use some anti-seize on this area. Just a thin amount will do. We'll use our glove finger to spread it around. Now we can install our brand new carrier bearing. When you install this, make sure you have it in the proper orientation. We want to have this rubber portion facing towards the front of the vehicle. When you go to install this, you need to ensure that you install it by pressing up against the inner race here. Never against this shielded area or against any other rubber portion. You will cause damage and you're going to have to re-replace the carrier bearing. Slide this straight over the shaft here. It should want to slide on fairly easily until we get up to the point that we'll have to continue driving it into the proper position. At this point, we'll be using an adapter that fits directly against the race. As I mentioned, never against the shield or against the rubber. I've got a nice long tube here. Now let's continue on driving this into place until it's completely bottomed out. Now as I was driving that in, I could hear an audible difference. It was click, 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 clunk, clunk, clunk. We'll pause for now. Have a quick look along the backside here to confirm we are completely bottomed out. As long as it is completely bottomed out, we'll continue on with our spacer across this rearward side here.
Just give that a quick look. Make sure it's completely bottomed out against the bearing. We'll give this a spin. That's a lot better. Let's continue cleaning up this area, including the splines. Try to remove any miscellaneous debris. We'll use some parts cleaner and a rag. A quick inspection to make sure nothing's rotted and damaged. This is very important. Let's pre-lubricate this with some high temperature lubricant. We want to make sure that we lubricate along the splined area here and also down closest to the tip. That will help this slide onto the seal. That'll help the seal slide into place. Now we can start installing the rearward shaft onto the forward shaft. What you're going to find is that the splined area of the forward shaft does have a small keyed area on the splines. It's a little wider than all others. Now let's slide the rearward shaft onto the forward shaft. When you do this, you want to pay attention to the splined areas. It does have a keyed notch. Take our time on this. We don't want to cause any damage to that seal. Just keep working it around until it slides right on. There we are. A quick check of our markings. Of course, the drive shafts won't fit together if you're not properly aligned, but it's a good idea to at least confirm it. Let's get this back over to the vehicle. As we bring this over to the vehicle, let's make sure that we grease this joint. Plenty of grease in here. We want to make sure that as this is driving down the road, if the suspension compresses or decompresses, the drive shaft will be able to do the same. Oh yeah, perfect. Now that it's well lubricated, let's make our way under the vehicle. Before you install your drive shaft, it's important to make sure you clean and inspect the seal along the backside of your transmission. As you can see, when we pulled out the drive shaft, a little bit of fluid came out of there. We'll go ahead and give this a quick wipe. Make sure that the rubber is still soft and pliable. This feels good. Make your way to your rear differential yoke. Back here, we'll be paying attention to the two areas where our caps were located, and then also the flat areas. We'll use a wire brush, make sure everything's clean. Sandpaper if necessary. While we're under the vehicle, let's make sure that we have our hardware ready. We're going to continue on by taking the drive shaft, we'll slide it over this cross member and into the transmission at the far end there. Rest the drive shaft on a jack stand of some sort and we'll continue on with the center carrier bearing. Get my hardware. If you wanted to, you could also use another support under this area while you continue. Make sure we use our washer and our mounting nut here. Now that they're started, snug them up, torque those to 30 foot-pounds. Let's get the tape off of here. Before we install the drive shaft, into the rear differential yoke, it's important to make sure you clean up the threads of your mounting bolts. 
apply a thin amount of blue thread locker, never red thread locker, and clean the inside of each one of your caps. Let's start bringing this into position. Pay attention to your caps. You don't want them to fall out of place. Go ahead and press it right into that rear differential yoke. Don't let go until you start in each one of your two caps. Otherwise, this could potentially fall and hurt you. We'll start these in, snug them up, and torque them to 18 foot-pounds. With the rear drive shaft fully mounted, make your way safely under the hood. We're looking for the transmission dipstick along the passenger side rear of the engine compartment. We're going to have to top off the transmission fluid with the manufacturer specified fluid. That will be done through the port along where the dipstick tube is. Just go ahead and remove that dipstick, use a funnel, and add it directly through this area. You always want to check your transmission fluid with your vehicle on a flat level surface and at normal operating temperature while running. Once you've gotten to that point, let's go ahead and check the fluid by pulling out the dipstick, wiping it off, reinstalling it, and checking that fluid level. While I have the dipstick out, let's just have a quick look here. Right where my thumb is, you can see a small hatched area with two dots. If your vehicle is at normal operating temperature, you should be pretty much anywhere inside these hatches. If your vehicle has been sitting and it's cold, it's typically going to be someplace down here, but that's not how you want to check the level. Okay friend, we finished our installation. At this point, you want to go ahead and close the hood, take your vehicle for a road test, and listen for funny noises. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.